Welcome to the How to Succeed podcast, the show that helps you get to the top and stay there. This is How to Succeed at Improving Your Communication with DISC. The following podcast is copyrighted by Sandler Systems, Inc. and protected by U.S. copyright laws. Sandler is the worldwide leader in sales, management, and customer service training. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, or Spotify or check out any of our additional resources at Sandler.com. I'm your host, Mike Montague, Director of Community Engagement at Sandler. And my guest this week is another Sandler trainer from Troy, Michigan. His name is Chris Druin. We're going to talk with him about how to succeed in improving your communication. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Tell me a little bit about DISC and how you can use it to improve your communication. Well, Mike, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, been a loyal fan listener to these for a while. Now to be in the seat is, is kind of exciting. Um, I know you guys have talked about DISC many different sessions, and it's such a part of what we do. Uh, you know, again, with the Sandler submarine, starting with bonding and rapport, the most important thing that I learned a while back was, was that the golden rule didn't always apply. And, and that golden rule you remember from elementary school is, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. And then I quickly realized I'm an extrovert. I, I am loud. I'm, I'm spontaneous. I'm gregarious. I, I can overwhelm some people sometimes. And so if we go back to don't treat people how you want to be treated, but treat people the way they want to be treated, people buy from people they like. People buy from people like themselves. So if you can find a way to connect with somebody, it just takes a little bit more effort and there's nothing dishonest or unethical about meeting them where they want to be communicated at, but just giving them more comfort and ease, that bonding and rapport part of it goes so much easier in your communication with them. I love it. A great place to start, update that to the platinum rule there, treat the other people the way they want to be treated. And uh, like you mentioned, we cover DISC a lot. So if you don't know what DISC behavioral styles are, you can search DISC in this podcast list and, and hit one of the intro level sessions or ask your Sandler trainer about it and you can get your own extended disc profile there. But that being said, I think it's really just a framework for us to kind of um, see the world, right? And and see who how this person behaves and uh, how they prefer to communicate and interact with the world. And that gives us two valuable pieces of, of data. If you know where you are and you know where the other person is, you can kind of draw that path to meet in the middle a little bit easier. But when you think about attitude here, what are some of the ideal beliefs, particularly salespeople and leaders need to have, but really anybody needs to have in order to improve their communication? You know, Mike, with, with what we talk about in Sandler with the behavior attitude technique triangles, you know, the attitude definitely is, is where we start. And, and the attitude is is got to be one of that I, I am a good communicator. And, and what we've learned with DISC so heavily is that there is no good or bad communication style. It's not like you're going to be successful if you're a D or you're not going to be successful if you're a C. It's really just, it's what's most comfortable for you and it's what's easiest for you. And part of that attitude part of it, I think, is really being able to look inside and, and, and kind of do some self-reflection on where are my areas of development? Where are my areas of improvement? I love that this doesn't say, here's your strengths and here's your weaknesses. It says, here's your strengths and here's what I want to demotivate you or, or we call them blind spots, areas that you can work on. And part of my disc really taught me that I'm not perfect and that's okay. This is just what I'm most comfortable with. And it's kind of one of those things, oh, if you've ever been, uh, you know, a, an athlete and taken a golf lesson or taken a baseball, you know, and they analyzed your swing, if you can now start to acknowledge where you are having challenges, you can start working on it. And, and so this isn't even the technique part of it. This still goes back to the attitude part of it of there's some people that I'm going to just get right lockstep in. You know, we're both eyes, we're both outgoing, we're both gregarious. When I used to sell to C's, you know, those, those compliant people that had an emphasis on the accuracy and the expertise, I was so spontaneous that I drove them crazy. And I used to think of going into those meetings, man, this guy hates me, or, or this woman is absolutely annoyed by me. Mm -hmm. And as I started to get into DISC, I realized, okay, if I can treat them the way they want to be treated, and if I can focus on my weaknesses and my blind spots, I'm setting myself up for success with these people because... I understood their communication style. And again, it's not that they can't change their communication style either. Either 
it's just what they're most comfortable with. And when I say most comfortable, it takes the least amount of energy and effort. And so going back to the attitude on this, understanding that going into these, it would take me more energy and effort to first observe them, assess what they are, and then customize my behavior. And, and I guess when I say my behavior, I, I know that if I'm talking to somebody that's another I, I talk with my hands a lot. I, I'm loud. I talk fast. I drink a lot of coffee and I talk fast. But if I know I'm going up against somebody, not up against, but, but meeting with somebody that, that's more on that introverted side of the axis, especially somebody who's more compliant, I bring my hands down. My speech pattern slows down. I give them time to, to interpret what I've said to them because I know they're calculating what I said and giving them chance to respond rather than just being that high eye with all the energy that steamrollers over them. So I think a lot of it helps me set my attitude to have more confidence going into the meetings, that if I can observe them and assess them and really figure out how they'd like to be communicated with, that I can be better at my job and have a better chance to win. Or at least yeah. get my no, close the file and move on. Uh, I love that too. I, what I heard there for me was, uh, we have to have this attitude that it is possible to change. So we're not stereotyping the other person. We're also understanding that us, we don't have the right answer. There is no right or wrong answer for how to behave in any situation. Sometimes we like to think there is, but there's preferences. There's, you know, at least four different styles we talk about in the disc, but you got combinations of those. You got a lot of different situational reactions. And so to take that intellectual humility and curiosity and say, how can I best connect with this person, regardless of how easy it is for me or how I would prefer it to go? Like, I would prefer everybody to, you know, pick up the phone and say, hey, can I buy from you today? Uh, I'm really excited, yeah. but that's not the way it works. So uh, that was my second I thought there. We were talking, I love at the end is you got to meet them where they are, that that's our job as salespeople is to meet our buyers where they are and take them to where they want to go, like a guide or a Sherpa up the mountain. And you can't do that if you're willing to be unflexible. If you, you're saying, Hey, I'm halfway up the mountain here. You got to come meet me. That, that doesn't really work either. You got to get, get the, to them directly. It doesn't work there and it doesn't work in life. And, you know, a lot of the Sandlers that we teach, we talk about our identity versus our roles. In my role as a salesperson, as a Sandler trainer, I use DISC, a great deal. You know, I have some clients that meet my energy and meet my level of, of volume. And I've got some people that are so much more reserved that are analyzing what I'm teaching them. And if I teach the same way, if I train the same way for every person that comes through the door, I'm not going to be the best trainer I can be. So I have some clients that I do go and meet them at their disc, which might be a little bit more of a steady relator. Um, I have others that are a lot more direct in the dominant area. And, and if I can assess and observe them as I am coaching, teaching, leading them, training them, I think it's a better result for them as well. So there's my disc in my role as a salesperson selling Sandler training. There's my disc as a Sandler trainer, but I also use it with my family. I've got three kids that are all three different styles. And if I'm giving them three different tasks or three different goals, my six-year-old is a D. Like she has got to be in charge. My, my 11-year-old, my son, he's an I. I got to make it fun for him. I got to let him know where his positive experience and his chance to, to be influential can be there. And then my oldest daughter, who's 12, she's compliant. She's evaluating what I'm telling her and how is this going to do it and how am I going to do it best? So even within my life, I've used DISC in my role as a father, uh, as a parent, as a husband, to understand what motivates or might be the demotivators within my family. Um, you know, my wife is a, is a third grade teacher. She, she is a, a CS in the fact that as a teacher, she has to have her facts, her figures, her numbers, her grade book, her organization. As a C, she is that, that, that person about the relationship, or as the S, the, the relationship and the emphasis and the cooperation. When she gets home from school at the end of the day, you know, the old joke about we should name restaurants. Um, I don't know. What do you feel like? Because couples are always like, <laughs> where should we go for dinner? I don't know. What do you feel like? She's done making decisions. She's done trying to connect everybody. She's done trying to be the organized one. And she just wants me to embrace my role in the relationship with is let's have fun. Let's go do something and don't steamroller her with it and just dictate where we're going. 
but still kind of give her the access to be a part of the decision without worrying about her her over evaluating. Well, is Delaney going to like it? Is Harper going to like it? Gannon loves this, but like it just kind of yeah. gives her the options to do it. So I use it in my role as a dad. I use it in my role as a husband, and, and I use it in, in even officiating sports and how you deal with different coaches that have significantly different personalities and how they communicate with you as an official based on your calls. Yeah, for sure. I, I relate to all that. And I think that really kind of wraps up a nice behavior section here for us. But I'll I'll give you another crack at it. If there's anything that you have to share about, you know, our goals, plans and actions and doing the right thing at the right time. But I think you nailed it. This is something we do all the time naturally. Anyway, we meet we understand that we need to talk to uh, a child differently than we talk to our wife or a lacrosse coach like those are different people in different yeah. situations that you may you know be trying to get them to you know follow some kind of rule or, or what you want to do in all three of those situations but we realize that we're going to have to adjust our tone our body language and our our energy and the words we choose is different for an 11 year old than it is a you know 45 year old uh coach and so i think that sometimes that messes people up that they don't realize that this isn't being disingenuous. This is really just highlighting and paying attention to something you already do. And it's the best part of your communication, just like active listening is a great thing to do. And it's something that you can work on and improve and focus on. I think adjusting your communication is as well. Anything else you'd add to behavior? You know, the one thing I would say about behavior is, is not the difference between a 45 year old coach and an 11 year old player. I, I have 18, 11 year olds that I coach in my son's team and I've got 18 different personalities. I have DIs and DSs and DCs. I've got ISs and ICs and I like within each one of those kids trying to motivate, you know, 17, 18, 11, 10 year olds to be teammates, to be positive, to support each other, to try a new sport like lacrosse where they you know, most moms and dads didn't play. This is something new for everyone. I still use DISC in my behavior there. And, and just like dealing with NCAA coaches, there are some Ds that are flat out screamers and yellers. And by giving them the last word in a conversation gets that relationship back on task. Now, the last word was the flag I threw. I'm not picking the flag <laughs> up, but just letting them get the last word in on the conversation so that they feel like they they prove their point, will go much further than trying to talk over them for future calls later in the game. If I'm dealing with a coach that's an I and they're all wild and crazy and yelling and screaming and not in a negative dominant way, just in that they're very animated, communicating with them that I'm not mad at them and they're not mad at me, we still have a good relationship and I heard them out, goes a long way in how our relationship continues throughout games. Just like if I have a coach that's an S or a C, there's different things that I do in there. So whether it's a 45-year-old coach, I still look at their disc and how I need to communicate with them. If it's an 11-year-old player, I still need to communicate with them. And in sales, we've walked into that room with multiple decision makers and we've got a D and I and S and a C around the table. And how do we still consciously prepare ourselves and our behaviors to be ready to talk to whatever a person might feel as their goals, their motivation, their, what's solving for their, their pain? And I think that leads us right to technique. So specifically for salespeople, what do you think are some good techniques here and maybe ways that we can uncover, you know, what, how they prefer, but also uh, adjust and improve our communication? Mike, it's a great question. And I, I say this seriously, cheat. <laughs> there are products oh. out there like Crystal Nose where you can go and it will give you an estimate of their disc through their LinkedIn profile. Um, it's fairly accurate depending on how people, you know, set up what they are. Is it perfect based on their LinkedIn? No, but it gives you a good head start. Um, I actually have on my wall reminders in, in some of the printouts from our standard material, and I review them on a regular basis. Emotional intelligence, high, low, you know, be a student and be a product of the product is what we say in Sandler. And with DISC, I review it often. And, and I take it a step further where when we talk about our extended disc, it's, it's what, a 35-page document you get after you do your assessment. The back end of it, the last page, is three things to start doing, three things to stop doing, and three things to continue doing. And when I journal every day, 
I rewrite my three starts, stops, and continues. And I'm looking up on my whiteboard. I've got my three starts and continues. I've got it on the bathroom mirror when I'm shaving and brushing my teeth in the morning, my three starts, stops, and continues. And it does give me that reminder of these are my strengths. These are the things that I need to continue doing that makes me who I am and it helps me be successful. These are the things that are my blind spots. These are the things I need to stop doing. I'm an eye. I'm spontaneous. I bungle the details. All three of my starts are go paperless, write more things down. Don't forget the details. Make sure I'm following up on time. All of my starts are my blind spots. And then my stops is some of the things that are my bad habits. And that's things like having post-it notes all over my desk or, or forgetting about, hey man, you're an I, you're not organized enough to wing this. Get it written down, get it in your calendar. Again, we talk about upfront contracts. Hey, I'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. I'll give you a call. No, I'll talk to you mm -hmm. next week. Great. Tuesday is open at 10 a.m. How does that work? For, like, those are my start, stops, and continues. So if you've ever taken DISC or you're ever interested in it, the extended workbook that asks you to evaluate your strengths, your weaknesses, your blind spots, how you communicate with a D, an I, or an S, or a C, how you prepare for a meeting with them, how you present to them, that's all very important in using DISC for sales. But use that yeah. last page and how you use DISC for yourself. And the good thing is, if you keep hammering at home and you have it in your journal and you have it on your whiteboard and you have it when you're shaving and brushing your teeth, you start to get better at it. And so every six months I look at it and I go, the three things I need to start doing, do I need three new ones? The three things I needed to stop doing, do I need three new ones? You know, this journey, we're, we're, we're always all... All of us are always a work in progress, right? None of us yeah. are going to hit the level we, we can or will be at. And who I am now at my age versus 10 years ago, completely different person. Uh, I want to ask you here and wrap up with one tough one, which is I feel like there's also something to be said about strengths. And I like the strengths finder assessment and other things. And um, sometimes I think you do have to work on the weaknesses, the stop doing things and shore up anything that's holding you back or delegate to somebody else. So I think that's one we miss a lot when we teach the disc is like, if you can't do a spreadsheet, don't do the spreadsheets, like send out your taxes, <laughs> you know, send out the accounting yeah. work to somebody else and stop doing that because you're not going to get better at it. You're not going to learn to love spreadsheets uh, really if you're, uh, if that's not your thing. But I know that when we're talking about adjusting the communication here, sometimes I feel like we do need to tone down some things, but I don't want to lose what my strength is, what the essence of why people, you know, like me, why I've been successful up to this point. Do you have any advice on how you balance that, keeping yourself and keeping what got you to this point while also working on some of the weaknesses or uh, mitigating things that we want to work on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, whenever you take a, a DISC assessment, it gives you what your comfortable communication style is and then also what you think you need to be. Here's the scary part. I'm 50I, 50S, and I think I need to be 95% I. I think I need to be even more outgoing than I am, which dealing with my friends that are introverts, they're like, would you stop inviting people over? I don't hate people. I just don't, I don't like new people. And so I need to be conscious of that when I'm working with what my strengths are, is that I am outgoing. I, I am fearless when it comes to public speaking. I, I am comfortable walking up to strangers and starting a conversation, but not everybody around me is comfortable as well. And I need to be respectful of what other people's comfort level is, where maybe at certain times I need to let out a little at a time to bring the trust up before we really start engaging in a sales conversation or we really start bringing the trust up before we start bringing in other decision makers in the process. So my strengths that I will never walk away from is meeting people, being warm, being open, welcoming them in. But getting back to what you said, my strengths are not quotes. My strengths are not spreadsheets. My strengths are, are not multi powerpointed just give me the mic and I'll wing it kind of thing. Like I need to bring other people in on that kind of kind of decision. And so when I deal with those that that maybe are not used to me on 10, and I know I, I don't hope that doesn't come off as, as too no, arrogant. I get cocky, what you're but, saying. Yeah. but I know who I am. I know I'm the loudest guy in the room without trying to say, hey, everybody, look at me. I just am loud and I'm outgoing and I'm friendly. And that can be sometimes even up to abrasive with people that are not comfortable with it. 
I'm not going to stop being myself, but I can also understand my tone, my volume, my inflection, my pitch. My, my, I mean, th- there's certain things that just you recognize, Mike. I always joke about the bro hug, right? You know, where you shake someone's hand while you're patting them on the back. Yeah. If I've got an I, no problem. They embrace that. If I've got a C or an S, nice firm handshake, but leave it at that. I, we haven't built that relationship where it is that. Where I sit across from them at a conference room table, a D, I'll sit right across the head of the table and stare them directly in the eye to meet them. An S, I'll sit directly next to them. So I'm sorry, an I directly next to them so that we have that emotional, you know, reach out and touch someone. Whereas an S would be across a shorter length of the table or even as a, a C, kitty corner. So if they don't want to look me in the eyes, that's okay. I'm here to answer their questions and be a part of it. So I physiology, depending on who I'm working with, so that I will still be who I am, but just put them at ease for, for what's going to be more comfortable for them. I love that. Once again, we're talking with Chris Druin, a Sandler trainer from Troy, Michigan. And we've been talking about how to improve your communication, specifically with DISC and a little bit of an advanced lesson here. Uh, But I want to get to know you a little bit better, Chris. At this point in your career, how do you define success? Um, Is the Pinnacle Trophy too much to ask? Um, No, (laughs) I I define my success by my cookbook and my behaviors. If, if I'm hitting cookbook and, and, and doing the prospecting I need to do, I seem to have success. And if I'm getting away from my behaviors, that, that's where I really start to crumble. So I define myself yeah. and my success by, am I doing the behaviors in my cookbook? And what was the biggest hurdle or lesson learned you had to get over in your career in order to be successful? Oh, wow. Uh, great question. I, I, I really think that the biggest hurdle per se was having the faith in myself that I could not only be a great prospector, but a good salesperson. I can meet anybody. But again, going back to DISC and I, hey, Chris, we really like the presentation. We really like you, but we're going to go another direction. And I go, oh, at least they liked me. No, like <laughs> right. you didn't get into this business to make friends. We got in this business to make money. And I had to remind myself that making friends doesn't take me to the bank in sales. Do you have a favorite quote? I do. And and it's not his original, but um, one of my mentors uh, early in my career, non Sandler, was Stephen Luigi Piazza, who passed away a couple of years back. Um, But he was a servant leader and he always went back to the uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I was that guy that, you know, whatever Sandler term you want to use, spilled my candy in the lobby, features and benefits to everything. Nobody cares how much I know. It wasn't until I realized people buy from people they like and they people they trust, build that rapport with them. Show them you care about them and their business and solving for their pain, and then have the conversation with them on, show them how much you know. Be a student. Of I love it. All right. Let's wrap it up for everybody here today. Uh, one attitude, behavior, and technique for improving your communication. What's one attitude you would like people to have? Uh, understand yourself. If you understand yourself and you have the attitude that what I do is my most natural, comfortable, least amount of energy is good about who I am, but I still need to understand others and try to help mirror them. There's nothing wrong with you and your communication style as DISC. You're good. None are better or worse. None are right or wrong. And one action item or behavior you would like people to do. If you've done DISC and you threw it in a drawer, pull it out, go to page 35, do your starts, do your stops, do your continues. Share it with your spouse, share it with your boss. Do you have an accountability group? Share it with your accountability group. Tape it to the mirror in the bathroom for when you're brushing your teeth in the morning. Figure out what you're gonna do to start, stop, and continue to make yourself more successful. And finally, the best technique to use. Best techniques is to, is to cheat. And, and don't take this one time and throw it in the drawer. Read it often, assess it often. Um, put it on your board, put it underneath the glass on your desk. If you're doing a Zoom call, so you can sit down as you're talking to somebody and analyze it and, and make sure that this isn't just one of those concepts that you learn, but that you actually live every day. I love it. That is a, a great one. Life is an open book test. So uh, cheat your butt off. That's uh, 
what I always say. Uh, for more information on Sandler and our disc resources, you can go to sandler.com or reach out to a local Sandler trainer. We also have an enterprise team available. If you have a multi-state or a large sales force, they will help you out there as well. And you can leave us a review, share this podcast with somebody that you think needs to hear it or click subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for listening. And remember, whatever you are, be a good one. The How to Succeed podcast is brought to you by Sandler, the worldwide leader in sales, management, and customer service training with over 200 locations. For more information, visit Sandler.com.